this lecture will focus on the trade-off between equity and efficiency. Now, as the government goal of equity in income distribution suggests, the government aims or tries to make the income distribution in Australia as fair as possible. However, sometimes this comes at the cost of the efficiency of the nation. So we're going to look at, firstly, how the achievement of equity can often lead to inefficiency. And secondly, we're going to look at how sometimes an overzealous view of efficiency can lead to inequity. So the government has to weigh up both options and try to, to balance equity and efficiency out so that both can be achieved. So first we're going to look at equity and inefficiency. So what happens there is if the government tries to make the country more equitable, this means everyone has a decent or reasonable standard of living. And to have a reasonable standard of living, the government could do either two things. Make everyone work or increase taxation. And making everyone work would be very hard in this market economy, so they don't do that. They increase taxation. And by increasing taxation, they can then redistribute this taxation in the form of transfer payments. We've talked about transfer payments being payments made by the government to people who are out of jobs and who don't have um, a regular stream of income flowing into the, the household. So an increase in taxation means that the government has more revenue and more money or more funds to actually uh, pay out these transfer payments to those without jobs. And therefore, that would increase the overall average income of the economy so that we lead to a more equitable income distribution. However, the cost of increasing taxation here is that it may discourage people to work. So take for example, if we're earning around, at the moment, transfer payments $200 a week. If you multiply that by 52 weeks in a year, you're going to get around $10,000. Okay? And that's a very, very low income. So that's around $10,000 per year on transfer payments. What if, say, this transfer payment actually increased to $1,000 a week? And you multiply that by 52 and therefore you have an average wage around $52,000 a year. And people can live very comfortably off $52,000 a year. That's only from transfer payments. And by, by increasing taxation, they have the, the scope to actually pay people $1,000 a week. So therefore they can live a very, very high standard of living given that they have no job. This is compared to a person with a job, say, a teacher. And let's say their average salary is around $70,000 a year. They're only making $18,000 more, but they're putting in uh, a lot more hours. They're putting in 9 to 5 um, day work days, and they're putting in weekends, and they're putting in most of their holidays as well. But they're only making $18,000 more. So the teachers will ask themselves the question, is it worth teaching when we're only earning $18,000 more than just living off transfer payments by the government? And oftentimes the answer will be no, and teachers will start to fall out of their jobs and become disincentivized to work because they can just live off high transfer payments. So that's a cause of inefficiency because resources especially labor, become unused. So those on the fringe of actually entering the workforce 
will then choose not to work because it's easier and choose to uh, live off the transfer payments by the government because of such high um, transfer payments made by the government. And again, with an increase in taxation, this would again discourage people to work because they're getting taxed more out of their hard work. And because they're getting taxed more, they have less disposable income for themselves and therefore choose not to work and rather live off transfer payments. So that's why when the government chooses to promote efficiency here, that's going to come at the cost. So when they choose to promote equity, that's going to come at the cost of efficiency. So inefficiency would arise if the government are over generous in their transfer payments. So the way the government counters this is to decrease uh, transfer payments and decrease the tax rate, especially on companies, so that it encourages people to enter the workforce, encourages people to work and to earn their own living. So that's the first part of this trade-off. Equity, the achievement of equity, largely comes at a cost of achieving efficiency in the workforce. And efficiency is defined by how well resources are utilised. And in this case, laboured resources especially will become unused or underutilised given um, overzealous attempts by the government to increase efficiency or e equity, to increase equity in the income distribution of the nation. Now, secondly, we're going to look at the promotion of efficiency. Efficiency is achieved when resources are allocated to their most efficient use. Efficient use. And this often comes when costs, especially opportunity costs, are minimized. And when we're talking about the equity and income distribution, this is most uh, most relevant in labor costs. So businesses want to minimize their labor costs. And the most prevalent example of these labor costs um, forced upon businesses at the moment is what is called the minimum wage. So the government tries to promote equity here by imposing a minimum wage. So people can only be paid a certain amount or a minimum certain amount uh, for, for their work so that they can receive a fair remuneration for their efforts. However, if the government were to promote efficiency over equity, they would scrap this minimum wage. Because as we know, the minimum wage is above the equilibrium price. And because it's above the equilibrium price, uh, there will be an insufficiency, uh, in inefficiency embedded in the resource allocation. So what happens here when the government tries to promote efficiency is that they're going to encourage businesses to cut costs. And when they encourage businesses to cut costs, the most obvious cost to cut is labour. Because that represents the highest or the greatest ongoing variable cost for businesses. And so what they do is they only choose the best labourers. They want uh, they want workers to compete with each other. They want workers to continually develop skills and not become complacent and to develop their efficiency. And to do that, they're going to uh, cut labour and almost threaten labour that if you don't improve your efficiency, you're going to lose your job. And oftentimes, because they are so uh, concerned about cost cutting and improving efficiency in the way that the resources are allocated, this would mean high levels of unemployment. Most notably structural unemployment. Because when businesses promote efficiency, they're going to replace labour with capital. And instead of uh, hiring labour, they're going to use capital instead in their place. So as we know, when people are unemployed, 
they move from factor incomes to transfer incomes. And as we know, factor incomes are much greater than transfer incomes paid by the government. If the government's promoting uh, efficiency, they're going to tax people less to encourage people to work in the workforce and therefore have less revenue to pay out transfer incomes. And what this means is that people are going to experience a lower material living standard and a more inequitable distribution of income because those who work will have a higher wage than those who don't work who receive a very meager transfer income salary. So that's the trade-off between efficiency, the achievement of efficiency, which may be at the detriment of achieving equity. So that's the trade-off between equity and efficiency. Sometimes when, we, when the government tries to achieve equity here, they're going to not achieve or come at a cost of achieving efficiency. And again, when the government tries to promote efficiency in the workforce, this may come at a cost of achieving equity. So the, the income distribution may be less equitable.